This lady is going to be the subject of today's clip in which I want to talk about because I think, well, she's really done something amazing here. She's managed to scam about a quarter of a million pounds out of the BBC to work three days a week in which he says racism bad. Good job. Good job, lady. So this is the story. You can see David Postick here. Uh, June Sarpon, the BBC's diversity guru, works three days a week in return for a salary of £267,000 a year. So that's over $300,000 for any Americans watching. Mm. She's also the author of a book, The Power of Privilege, How White People Can Challenge Racism. <laughs> and you can probably guess what that's all about. Um, so if you can click on this one, because I, I need to get the quotes out of here. So they say, at £1,700 a day, former Channel 4 presenter Sarpong is paid more pro rata than the BBC's director general, who earns 4, £429,000 a year. So, God, what a grift. £1,700 a day to just walk in and be like, racism bad, see you tomorrow. And then just leaves. <laughs> I kind of get you gotta appreciate the grift there's something about it it's just like right yeah okay I don't know how you've gone away with this but fair enough to you for getting that money out of there it's the BBC director general and the government's fault for paying you three days a week uh, was it three days a week three days a week three days a week yeah quarter of a million pounds a year it gets worse license fee payers money so they have to pay it because she's the general director of diversity <laughs> Which is its own industry, isn't it? Yes. So within the Beep, Sarpong currently presides over one hundred million pounds in the budget to boost <laughs> ethnic diversity. Okay. Right. Mm. Unbelievable. Good. She also got hundred mil sat there to just spend on whatever nonsense she wants. Jesus. So there have been some responses. Former Tory leader and Brexiteer Ian Duncan Smith said, How can anyone be worth paying £267,000 for the three-day a week? Once again, the BBC has scored a known goal. There must be thousands of perfectly qualified people who could do this job for less. No, you goddamn Idiot. moron. For God's ah. sake, it is not. No, she's being paid a bit much to be in charge of diversity. The whole department is a cancer on the institution that sucks away money from the taxpayers to be spent on leftist causes that has nothing to do with ending racism or tolerance. Dear Ian Duncan Smith, remember you're a conservative. This is You don't want this. I mean, if this was, you know, 100 million a year to, to boost Aryan purity, you should also be like, yeah, well, that's Could also you get bad. Could someone for cheaper? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Couldn't we do that for a bit less? No, that's the wrong response, uh, Ian. Yeah, apparently she also makes 100k more than the... PM, so that's normal. Well, so, yeah, well, yeah. God. There was one response from a conservative from the uh, the chairman of the Tories Common Sense Group. You remember we issued the yep. manifesto, which was gold. So he says, it's clear that the BBC's preoccupation with every kind of woke cause has encouraged them to pay an excessive salary to a woman for working a three-day week. Maybe it would be better off spending the money on priorities of the people who listen, watch, and watch the BBC, not on the prejudices of the liberal bourgeoisie that run it. Much well, better. that is true. Why don't you just defund it? Yeah, that should be the stance. And I don't know why the government hasn't done that yet. When I, I spoke to a Conservative MP after the victory, he mm -hmm. said to me that they were going to decriminalise not paying it, which was essentially them de facto saying to the public, you don't have to pay it anymore. Yeah. Which is, I'd rather you just outright just went, oh, come on. This, this is just nonsense. We don't need this anymore. It's not 1950 which is not. So Sarpong came to prominence as a presenter on teen entertainment show T4, although she was never far from politics, having dated equality and EU campaigning uh, campaigner Labour MP David Lammy around this time. See, I used to watch her when she was on TV. I, if, I remember being quite young. She must, she's must. she been around a long time. She's been radicalised by David Lammy by the looks of it, because uh, the stuff she's coming out with now is, is nuts. So they mentioned here the book she wrote, and uh, I went to just type in the book and then went on Google and you can get the preview of it. And with all of these kind of things, you need to read like a few pages to understand yeah. what on earth it's going to be about. And what's this one about? Well, it's the usual critical race theory, white people bad, brown people inferior. So, so in here, she quotes critical race theory, such as Peggy McIntosh when she's mm -hmm. whining about white privilege. The author of the uh, unpacking the, the white privilege knapsack. Yeah. So there's some quotes in here I wanted to go through because I thought they were really funny. So she says that a system of white privilege Though being white-dominated results in white people almost always occupying societal positions of power, a person of colour inhabiting this position is consequently seen to be an exception. White dominance, Johnson explains, can be seen in Barack Obama being described as a black president and not just the president. Right, number one, uh, the reason it's different is obviously because whites are the majority in the US and there hasn't been one and because of American history. But even then, if you want to say that race doesn't matter, as the liberal position should be, well, who's the one implying that there should be racial consciousness in society and we should see him as a black man? As, also if, as if the black community in America wasn't framing Obama as the black president. Hmm. There's also the point of just, well, he's also not black. He's uh, 
he was the what was he the the americans i don't know what term they use that's correct but i'm gonna say they called him the mixed candidate and then when he became the president he was the black president hmm. there's that aspect as well anyway so she continues this white dominated society further leads to white identification throughout which white people are identified as the norm probably because of the majority everyone who calls outside of this category often people of color are defined by what they are not non-white rather than what they are who's doing that who's the one doing that <laughs> it would be strange for one group of people to be set as the standard for all humans without there being a reason for it i'm sure if you lived in africa june that wouldn't be the case and so society constructs the most logical explanation the whites are the majority and <laughs> no, the no, 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 no 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 the white people are the norm because they are seen to be superior <laughs> Jun Sarpong, famous white supremacist. I love it. It's just like they think we are gods. Like there's something about white people that is just something they can never achieve. It's just a skin tone, lad. It's 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 nothing special. And it's not surprising that in, in say England, most of the people are white skinned because they're Northern European. Nah, it's because they're superior. Jun Sarpong, leader of diversity <laughs> at the BBC, <laughs> quarter of a million pound a year to get go. Yeah, white people are better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Just defund all of this. All yeah. of this needs defunding. She continues in her book. These two principles combined with white. Ah, yes, the, no, no. These are the principles we're operating on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> combined with the principle of white centredness, putting white people in the center of attention from newspapers, books to films and TV, result in white people being afforded unprecedented amounts of opportunity and advantages simply because they are white. Tony Sewell disagrees with you, June totally disagrees it's actually white people are failing because for some reason the education system is loaded in favor of non-white people yeah if you want to look at the outcomes that's don't know a... don't know why that is june but you seem to be talking out of your rear mm. also the idea that white people are represented in books and films not anymore what's... not according to netflix but also what's wrong with that like what's the problem with that you're gonna say that they're the majority well they're the majority of the country so what's the problem with that either like, there's nothing, it's just, I hate white people, I'm sorry. That's all this ever ends up coming down to. Yeah. But she continues, amongst the groups representing these diverse characteristics, hmm, white women from affluent backgrounds undoubtedly are those with the most agency in society and are likely to have the closest proximity to their male equivalents who are in the most privileged group. So white women, in case you're wondering, you have diverse characteristics. This is like the, birth <laughs> the birthing person thing, where it's yeah, like, yeah. you're not a woman, you're a birthing person. You're a birthing diversity unit, but you're also getting tack feared out of the diversity race. Yep. You're not part of us anymore because you've got too much proximity. This is very men. much the Bill Burr point. It's like for all of all of human history, the white women are like, yeah, we get to take advantage of all the oppression. And now that it's over, they're just trying to step over the fence into the oppressed groups. Like, no, 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 no. You're, you're with us. If we're all getting blamed, you're getting it too. Yeah. The, he said back in that article as well, the, the uh, chap earlier, who said, in a recent interview, uh, June said, there is unfairness baked into our system. <laughs> yeah, there is. There is. There's no way I could get a quarter of a million a year for working three days at the BBC. And that's never, never going to happen because I'm white and I'm male. You are black and you're female and that's what you're on. This is an unfairness baked into the system. I completely agree with you. I don't for a single second say that all white people are privileged. <laughs> you did in your book. Yeah. Of course not. But there are benefits even if you come from a low income and you're white. You're never judged on your race. Oh, wow. And that's the thing that was holding back the white working class. Right. June, BS. Shut up. You utter liar. Your own organization discriminates against white people on the basis of their race. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't if you're white working class, you can't get certain jobs at the BBC because you're white. Stupid crocodile tears from the goddamn people who run this country. So her sitting there, you're never Gosh. judged on your race being white. First tweet here, we talked about it before. This is one job in which the BBC, if you can get that second image, in which they, what was the wording here, they used for their own jobs. This opportunity is only open to black, Asian, and ethnically diverse candidates. Off June. In liar. You're never judged on your race. Let's go to the next one. This is just another example of it happening because it happened before, years ago, in which they also had a trainee, she internship for, I think it was the radio station, yep. only open to ethnic minority backgrounds. I, I can't believe that people would talk like this when your own organization, this is no undoubtedly your department, you do this. There is no one else calling for this stuff. June Sarpong has a four-day weekend, and she, literally it's only available to her because of her skin color. I'm so, I'm so oppressed. Oh, oh I've got to hear it. You white people. working class don't know how good you've got it. No, you can't have that job because you're white, but, you know. There's also her influence over the new director general. I think the, what was it, the Tories appointed this guy, mm -hmm. and he was the big for war about it, but he doesn't seem to be able to do much. It also looks like the, yeah. the meme of the conservative. Anyway, but let's, let's get to this, the next image here, in which you have uh, David pointing out that there are new standards for the BBC in which they want 95% of their staff to complete unconscious bias training. Well, why not 100%? 
And also, 50%. No, seriously, why not 100%? They'll get there. But why, just... why, why are they accepting 5% of their staff to be obvious racist? Because unconscious bias training is pseudoscience and doesn't work anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. But they also say they want 50% of all gay employees to be out. <laughs> How are you going to do that? I recall this, yeah. Are you going to walk into the uh, We're going to out room a bunch of gays at the With a baseball BBC. bat and be like, right, who's gay? <laughs> so, <laughs> if you don't tell us, you're fired. Go break your legs. Anyway, what's interesting, though, is the previous director general for the BBC actually admitted that this lady, June, is a diversity hire. <laughs> And so she's only where she is earning the money she is. Not only because she's a black woman, but because someone at the BBC was like, we need a black woman. Yeah, he, uh, this clip is a bit long, but it also just demonstrates how woke this guy was. But he literally says in here that I had a target of two black people on the executive team and she was black, so hired. I'm like, right, okay, enjoy this clip. Good Simple fun. as. Uh, the Secretary of State of the Dowden stated that the BBC lacks, and I quote, genuine diversity of thought and experience. Do you agree, Mr. Dowden, yes or no? Um, yes or no, um... I uh, uh, reject any charge that you're too woke and basically this, this is what he's sort of suggesting. Diversity, 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 BAME, diversity of disability, diversity, diversity of male, female, diversity of background, that diverse in all, diversity by diversity in BAME. I don't know whether that's woke or not, to be honest with you. So the answer is yes. But why is <laughs> Victoria Derbyshire the only BBC is. News programme being cut? Victoria Derbyshire programme um, has been a very good programme. It's actually not reaching the numbers that we hoped it would reach. Uh, we felt that uh, a programme that costs around about £3 million uh, pounds, uh, for an audience of around about 300,000. Uh, more male, actually, uh, and older than you might think, was um, uh, a programme that we should kind of rethink. June Sarpong we brought in as our um, creative diversity lead. She sits on the executive team, which means we now have an executive team with two BME people on, so I've achieved my target uh, in that sense. Um, uh, we're actually uh, uh, hopeful that we can have a creative diversity festival uh, led by her, led by the BBC. The whole reason she's there. What? A creative diversity festival? What? We're going to make our blacks f dance through the streets? <laughs> Look, we have our blacks. Look at them go. They're on a creative diversity Throw festival. Throughout the halls of the BBC. <laughs> This is definitely not racism. Oh, man. There was a clip later on as well in which they're boasting about how loads of people still watch the BBC and they trust the BBC. And I can't remember the name of the MP or the Conservative just turns around and goes, well, all the youngsters are all watching YouTube, so how, what do you make of that? And they all look at each other frantically enough. Which one do you want to answer? Any of you? <laughs> 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 they look like morons. Anyway. So, uh, remember her whining about white people being on TV and this was a problem? So, of course, her work, her very, very important work is that she set up an organization, a partnership here, so they can get more non-white people into, into More diversity hires. Media. Brilliant. They say in here, are you a debut author from an underrepresented background that is currently insufficiently or inadequately represented in UK publishing? If so, we want to hear from you. And then a message from her being like, yeah, more brown people in media because we're underrepresented. Um, no, no, you're not. In case you're wondering. We just we have the data, so we got a pink news of all people to prove you wrong as well. That's the best bit. So journalist absurdly claims gays and ethnic minorities are overrepresented on TV, and the backlash is fierce. So not Ooh. an organisation that would want to push such a narrative, but they they do in their own writing. Of course, they had to put some cope. Discrimination is over. We won. Even if hate crime in England and Wales is going up, it's more than doubled in the last four years. Had nothing to do with the point at hand, which is the representation on TV, but nice mm -hmm. cope there. That's their opening line. They say in here, The Diamond, the third cut inquiry, found that LGB folk make up around 11.9% of roles. One in 10 characters are LGB, the paper said, and around 6.4% of the national population identify as such. So nearly overrepresented by a factor of two to one. Yes. Massively overrepresented. Okay, well, then we need to get cutting those LGB characters for the sake of representation and diversity. That's the logical consistency of this narrative, but of course they had to write in here, although statistics mean that 88.1% of roles go to heterosexual people who are not in the slightest bit overrepresented. No, they're underrepresented, yeah. morons. That's how that works. Yeah, that's right. You are right. They're not in the slightest bit overrepresented. They are underrepresented. Mm. So if we get the first image up, this is the, the source they're using. I went to it. And you can see in here that the, the females... Bame, LGB, mm -hmm. are overrepresented, so we need less women. So women are overrepresented. Yeah, we need less women, we need less, less Bames, and also less LGBs. This is according to the leftist dogma. I don't care about the outcomes. You're the goddamn people who care about the outcomes. I care about the procedure. 
Anyway, but also that means we need more men, disabled, whites, heteros, and fifties. The beams are out, the, the beams are overrepresented two to one as well. Yeah, June, your organization. What do they need to be doing? According to the numbers, you need to be hiring more men, disabled, whites, heteros, and over fifties. Weirdly, transgender people are accurately represented. Yeah, transgender is the only ones doing perfectly yeah. Uh, aligned. Huh. Yeah. So I was mad that people have been pointing out that this charlatan has been able to take a quarter of a million pounds out of the BBC yeah. to push obvious nonsense. And uh, so some people have been defending her on this basis. <laughs> this one's really funny. So verified checkmark, of course. People hate black women being paid for things. Oh, yeah, that's that's what it was. That's <laughs> what it was. That's You got us. Yeah, yes. You got us. It's not that we're forced to pay for this grifter to work three days a week. Work, I say, in inverted commas. It's that I hate black women being paid for stuff. Like when she was a presenter, a presenter you on, know? on T4, no one was like, oh, no, no one cared. Paid. I liked her, actually. It's being, it's being paid for nonsense. The 100 million <laughs> diversity budget she's in charge of. 100 million you, you swindle out of the The taxpayers. absolute grift of it? No, no, no. That's not what I'm bothered about. Yeah. Should June Sarpon be doing this work for free? Yes, because it's pointless. Or no, she shouldn't be doing this work at all. But you're right. No, if she wants to do it, she'd be doing it for free. Well, yeah, sure. The, also, the Prime Minister's official salary is one thing, which is less than hers. The money he ha he <laughs> and his minions have made out of the pandemic is quite another. Again, you can Yeah, I agree. Let's let's cut their wages too. What's this what about as well? Yeah. No, no, it's no. Like, let's let's level the lot. Didn't didn't you know the government wasted money trying to combat COVID? Or at least they didn't waste it on diversity. I mean that's that's one thing. Combating COVID yeah. you could say is a thing that could be done. You could waste it on building roads and not build the road properly. But at least they tried to build the road. They didn't just sit around and talk about how oppressed they are and muffles. But I love the way she's like, oh, yeah, you're happy for the Prime Minister and the Conservatives to get all this money. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. Yeah, I've already complained about it. You know. She finishes that tweet with, suck out. Okay. And then she goes on later to complain and says, uh, leave black women alone, which is very reminiscent of yeah, leave Yeah, leave alone. my wallet alone. How about that? Mm. So there's uh, the next one here, another verified chat mark. What did he have to say? June Sarpong should get a raise. You could donate. If you want. Like, she can open a Patreon, can't she? You can see the, the midwits in the comments there being like, successful God. black woman works for the BBC. Tories. And it's <sighs> pitchforks. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. No no one no one is bothered that she's being paid to do what is essentially religious work. Mm. Reli ridiculous amounts at the BBC. No one's bothered about that. Do you want to know what this poor oppressed woman does for a living as well? Those three days a week when she's ever so busy. Um, I have some examples. So if we go to the next God. one. This was from her account, which she's celebrating that from what is this the female i don't even say that word how can purpose dri the female quotient how can purpose driven leaders drive the great reset oh bloody hell tune in live to the equality lounge at the world economic forums davos agenda <laughs> and then june sarah <laughs> oh god and that's the worst the worst advertising possible yeah there's another one god. in which uh, from her account in which she's just whining about the patriarchy online oh yeah i'm not joking if you scroll down you can see it's like a vr version of a robot in which she's just like, yeah, the patriarchy is bad with her book rotating in the background. 200, what was it, 260 some grand? You paid for that. <laughs> There's also her getting awards left, right, and center, because, I mean, what else is she going to do with all this money? So we go to the next one. This is her getting an award at the National Diversity Awards, which uh, you would have thought it was a meme. Like, I would have thought that's a 4chan Diversity prank. Diversity Award. Like, it sounds like a 4chan prank. June Sarpong, <laughs> Sarpon, congratulations for being black. And she's like, oh, thank you. I'm going to accept this award with all the money because I'm black. And at no point is she like, are they patronizing me? <laughs> are they like, patronizing the director, me? The Director General said to Parliament, you're a diversity hire. <laughs> like, sorry, I can't think of anything more embarrassing. And she's Here's the award for being black. <laughs> she's been nominated for a Lifetime Achiever Award at the National Diversity Awards 2021. She's been black her whole life. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. She also has, a, I think they mentioned there, she's got an MBE. Was it? Yeah, member of the British, um, Order of the British Empire or whatever. Isn't it? Yeah, member of the British Empire. Yeah. But don't worry, that's getting upgraded to the Order of the British Empire. Oh, there we go. Because uh, diversity oh. is key. So she's 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 been knighted. She's been given given all these weird orders. She's got like these diversity achievements, and she's being paid literally just to be black and to tell well, the BBC they're not a, black she enough. She does a lot of networking. Oh uh, yeah, I bet she does networking. I yeah. I would, if I were June Sapong, I'd feel like such a fraud. Yeah, so uh, one of the things she does for the networking, for example, is selling Obama's book. <laughs> you, you thought I'm joking? But like, this is a conversation she had between Barack Obama and Marcus Rashford. And you can see her. This is just a book. This is an advertisement for his book. Chill. Good work. Good, totally worth the money. But in case you're wondering, you mentioned about her feeling like an imposter. Uh, she does. 
<laughs> well, good. She should. <laughs> so let's go to the next she one. She absolutely should. The interview she gave, June Sarpong, every time interview I do, I still feel like an imposter. That's because you don't have anything behind you other yeah. than the fact that you're black. Let's play the clip of her admitting said impostorship. You know what? I'm insecure. I live in a world where actually I've been conditioned to think that I should be at the bottom of the hierarchy ladder and therefore it's a miracle that I'm even where I am. Let's let's give myself credit for that. Yeah. So you want credit for miracles? <laughs> like you you don't you credit God for miracles? I mean I'm not a religious man, so I'm not too au fait with it, but like June. You should not be at the bottom of the hierarchy because of your skin tone or your gender, sex, whatever you want to call it. You should be at the bottom of the hierarchy because you're a fraud. And you, you have no observable skills. You have no skills. And then, you, then, then, you spend your fair. time peddling critical race theory in your writings, and then with your work, you rattle on about how discrimination on race bad, and then instruct your organization to carry it out against white applicants. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.